Historians look at the 4th of July and tales of the Revolutionary War come to mind. So let's ride the coattails of the Revolution and think back on the players who changed the way the game of football is played. Let's start with Packers wide receiver Don Hudson. Until he came along in 1935, football offenses were pretty much three yards and a cloud of dust. Throwing the ball was almost viewed as a trick play. Hudson changed all that. He basically created many of the modern patterns that receivers still run today. He led the league in receptions in eight of his ten seasons and was the league's MVP in 1941 and 42. So while Jerry Rice may have been the greatest to ever line up outside, without Hudson, he and all the other great wideouts would have spent most of their time blocking and not receiving. Let's fast forward to the quarterback that changed it all, Johnny Unitas. Even though the passing game started to expand a little with Hudson's arrival, until Unitas, quarterbacks were mostly used to get the ball into the hands of the running back. He was basically the first quarterback to take games over with his arm, essentially making the quarterback position the most important on the field. You can't talk revolutionary players and not talk Jim Brown. Why just run the ball straight ahead when you can bounce it outside? Brown is still arguably the greatest back to play the game, and it was in part because he was an athletic freak. He showed that a back could create running lanes and not just run through them. Jim Brown to midfield. Jim Brown to the 40. Jim Brown is going to go all the way for a touchdown. He was bigger, faster, and stronger than just about everyone who played the game. And he used that combination to revolutionize the running back position. Nine seasons, over 12,000 yards, 106 touchdowns, and a ridiculous 5.2 yards a carry. And he also revolutionized retiring. He quit while he was at the top of the game. You're welcome, Barry Sanders. Simply put, there would be no Gronk without Kellen Winslow paving the way first. Without Winslow, tight ends were pretty much nothing more than a sixth lineman. Sure, they caught the occasional pass, but they were there to block. But when Winslow showed up on the scene, the position changed forever. He weighed in at 250 pounds, yet ran and caught like a wide receiver. He lined up in the slot, was set in motion, and even split out wide, making it easy to create mismatches. In his second season in the league back in 1980, Winslow caught 89 passes for 1,290 yards, single-handedly redefining how tight ends could be used. And last, but definitely not least, to the defensive side of the ball, LT. Hey, baby, let's go out there like a bunch of crazy dogs and have some fun. Lawrence Taylor was All-Pro 10 times, Super Bowl champion twice, and NFL MVP in 1986 the last defensive player to win the award. There were lots of great defenders who were good at tackling, defending the pass, or getting to the quarterback, but Taylor did them all. He created an entirely new standard that defensive players had to live up to. It felt like he was impossible to block, and regardless of what kind of play he called, he was usually involved in breaking it up. Taylor was like J.J. Watt and Von Miller wrapped up in one body, so he was basically the Thomas Jefferson of the defensive revolution. Happy Fourth of July, everyone.